Call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. The time is now 6 o'clock. Please join us as uh, Mr. Moore leads us in the invocation and Mr. Husbands in the Pledge of Allegiance. I invite you to stand if you are so inclined to join with me in prayer. God of all people in all places at all times, we pause before you tonight and give you thanks for bringing us towards the end of another day. God, we lift up our district to you, all of the students, the educators, the administrators, the support personnel, the families. We pray that as we near the end of this school year, you would continue to guide us. We pray for those who are nearing graduation, and we, we pray that your spirit would be with them to guide them in the next phase of their life. God, during this time, we especially lift up the Mitchell and Johnson families and uh, the horrible heartache they are going through. We, we thank you for those that you have called to be counselors and, and to heal not only bodies but spirits as well. And we pray that uh, as our entire community journeys with that family, that you would be with us all. Lord, as we set about your business tonight, we pray that your spirit would guide our discussions and our decisions that we might place the children, the community, and the employees of this district above all as we seek to make these decisions. We lift our prayers to you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Please join me as we honor our country and pledge our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now our state flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to be Texas, one state, under God, one individual. Thank you, Mr. Moore, Mr. Husband. Uh, item 2A, Special District Recognition, Marine Corps, J-O-R-T-C, National Champions, Dr. Stockton. Well, it's a pleasure to uh, have this item on the board <coughs> agenda for the first time. We're very excited, and I'd like to ask Dr. Merle, principal of the Woodlands College Park High School, to come to the podium. Dr. Stockton, Mrs. Bush, members of the Board of Trustees, I am honored to be before you tonight to recognize the Woodlands College Park High School Marine Corps Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps. First of all, I would like to thank each of you for your support of this program in all of our schools. It has been a great addition to our campus and has changed the lives of many. It has made our students more aware of their role in our community and government, as well as foster pride in our country and state. And I want to thank you for your support. At this time, I would like to ask Lieutenant Colonel Mark Stroman, the regional commander, uh, to come to the podium to make an announcement, as well as the instructors for the College Park Marine Corps JROTC, Major Cody Stewart and Sergeant Major Chris Combs. <coughs> Thank you, Dr. Merle. Dr. Stockton, Ms. Bush, um, members of the board, it's an honor for me to be here and um, be able to talk a little bit about these kids and uh, this program. Uh, let me put it into perspective a little bit. Across the nation, we have 265 Marine Corps Junior ROTC programs with over 40,000 young men and women that are participating, and that's just the Marine Corps. Uh, the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force have much bigger programs than us and a lot more kids. But in the state of Texas, we have 40 schools that have that carry the Marine Corps JROTC brand. Uh, as a regional director, I'm responsible for 57 schools over a four-state area. And I will tell you that uh, Dr. Merle and I uh, spent quite a bit of time talking, um, working over the last several years to get this program into the Woodlands College Park. And uh, it wasn't always easy, but I think that, as y'all see tonight, that uh, it's, it's really paid some dividends. I will say that uh, y'all have some really great young men and women in your school district, and particularly in the Woodlands College Park. Y'all should be very proud of them. Um, this was the first year that we've had a Marine Corps Junior National Championship drill meet. And that's not to say that it was easy uh, being the first-time champions. It was probably harder to be the first-time champions than, uh, than it will be to repeat. 
So I'm putting the pressure on they got to repeat next year. <laughs> but, but I will say this, that every time I go to uh, Quantico, Virginia now, where my boss is, that I eat for free. As long as we were the national champions, my boss has to buy me dinner. Um, so, so I probably won't be able to fit in my uniform next year. But, um, but, but y'all have y'all have really good kids. They they won in in everything. But the the competition we we've got five regions, and each region was able to pick their three best schools uh, to go to the national competition. And uh, for us, we had the Woodlands College Park Brenham High School and United South Laredo High School that went. And uh, I will say at the regional competition that the Woodlands College Park cleaned house. And they were kind of a dark horse. Nobody really <laughs> expected them. But I think everybody's gunning for them when we went to nationals. <laughs> and, um, and, and they did great there as well. I think the total points they won by almost 100 points over the second best team. And that's nationwide. And, uh, and that's just an amazing accomplishment. And I owe it to all to your great team here. Uh, Major Stewart and Sergeant Major Combs, and also to your young men and women that are in the program. And I just want to turn it over to uh, Major Stewart now. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having us here tonight. Uh, what I want to talk a little bit about is what they actually did at the National uh, Drill Competition. Uh, these kids, uh, first of all, I want to tell you a little bit about these kids. These are this is a third year program, as, as all of you know. Uh, the, the schools we were going up against were all schools that have been around 10, 15, some of them 20 years. So they've got kids that have been in the program for four years. Our kids, the most any of them have been in the program is three. So, and most of them standing right over here are freshmen and sophomores. So, so these kids are first and second year kids that are coming in and learning drill, the academics portion, which is very difficult, uh, color guard, all of that stuff really after football season until um, about three weeks ago, they worked uh, uh, to put these teams together and, and to practice every day and uh, through all their blood, sweat and tears, they, and yes, there were some tears, they, they made it. They, they won regionals, uh, like, we, like uh, Lieutenant Colonel Stroman talked about. They won regionals by quite a, quite a large margin, and then they went to nationals, and, and they did the same thing there. The things that they, uh, that they competed in were, were academics, inspection, armed drill regulation, armed drill exhibition, uh, and then unarmed drill regulation and unarmed drill exhibition and color guard. So seven different categories. And they placed first place in unarmed drill, first place in academics, and that wasn't even close. Second place in armed drill, third place in color guard, fourth place in unarmed exhibition, and then fifth place in armed exhibition and, uh, and, uh, and fifth place in inspection. So every single category they placed very high and, uh, and that's what, how they were able to accumulate those, the, the overall points uh, to win. And we also had two individuals that won special awards and that was the best color guard commander in the country, and that's Jaden Stanichek. He's right here. So he received he received a perfect score on his uh, as a commander score because the commander and the team are are graded separately. Perfect score for Jaden. Wow. And also, I'd like to recognize Jaden. He is going. He has been chosen to be our commanding officer for our company next year. And then the other award uh, was was uh, Corolla Mergia. She uh, come on up here, Corolla. She won for for the the unarmed commander. For uh, drill, she won with a perfect score, and she also got a perfect score at regionals and won that award there at regionals as well. So, outstanding. So, out of the 15 schools that represented the country, the two, that represented the 265 schools in the nation, these are your national champions. Thank you for having us here tonight.
Lining up for pictures was not part of the competition. <laughs> So on behalf of the board, I want to say in three short years to accomplish what you have accomplished and to take the program to this level is absolutely incredible. I, I am so amazed and I know we're all incredibly proud of you. Thank you, uh, Major Stewart and Sergeant Major Combs for investing in these students. Uh, this is an experience that so few get to have and it I know has changed their lives. Uh, having gotten to speak to three of them at length not too long ago, I, I saw that. And students, thank you for representing our district, our state, and our nation in such an impressive manner, academically and in the JORTC program. We are incredibly proud of you. This is our current commanding officer, Bree Robot. Thank you, sir. All right, item 2B, we've got lots of awards to give out tonight. Um, special district recognition, students together achieving results, program graduates, Dr. Stockton. Great, it is an exciting night with, with so many recognitions to give and we have another very special group of students that Denise Poller, our coordinator of guidance and counseling, is going to introduce when she comes in the board <laughs> room. And she is approaching the podium now. Don't don't run, don't run. <laughs> Great. Good evening. Graduating seniors are being recognized tonight for their participation and commitment to the Students Together Achieving Results STAR program. This is the eighth group of students to graduate, and we want to honor them for their hard work and persistence. High school counselors are asked to identify ninth grade students who struggled during their freshman year and invite them to participate in the program. STAR is focused on building strong relationships between counselors and the STAR students. As part of the program, the students are exposed to opportunities where they learn about themselves and how to plan for their future. The program has grown from a summer program to a year-round program. They hold monthly meetings as well as visits to community colleges, technical schools, and four-year colleges. Students have also visited job sites, done community service, heard motivational speech speakers, and participated in the ropes course. We're honored to have three of the participants here to share their experiences with you tonight. Caitlin Dickerson from Conroe High School, Allison Buonanno from the Woodlands High School, and Brittany Spielman from Caney Creek High School. Caitlin? 
Hello, my name is Caitlin Dickerson and I'm a senior from Connor High School. First of all, the, this program is truly a great program on our campus simply because it encourages all the students to try their best and try their hardest. And for me, it encourages me to continue and to um, acknowledge my full potential of being able to achieve more than I think I can. Because as a high school student, a lot of, a lot of difficult, unexpected things happen and it challenges you and you don't know how you're going to exactly exactly face them and this program has been there to support me and through it all whether it's a good or a bad decision they're there to pick me up and they're to encourage me to do better and to start over and they don't hold anything against you so just knowing that they have your back and that support through ever since freshman year it's, it's pretty great and just that even though things are tough, we can overcome them as a group. And I'm just so grateful to have been able to have this experience because they motivate me on a day-to-day -day basis. And thank you, STAR Program. You've given me a lot of opportunities, and I'm a proud senior that was in the program for all this year. And thank you. I'm Allison Bonanno. I'm a senior from the Woodlands High School. Uh, I have been in the STAR program since freshman year, and now I'm a senior. Um, when I first started going to the STAR program, I thought it was a joke because, um, you know, when you're younger, you don't really care about school that much. And then my junior year, I still didn't know what I wanted to do with my life after I graduated. So I started thinking about it, and we went to colleges. And I just wanted to go because I was skipping class and going to eat. And it was fun. And then I realized that it's just fun and games until you actually start to graduate. And I went to Sam Houston. And I love the campus. It um, helped me like, know what I wanted to do with my life, which I'm joining the criminal justice program. Thanks to them and the STAR program, I did not only know what I wanted to do with my life, but I made great friends that I'm still friends with right now and my counselors helped me so much through everything and I went from barely passing my grades from 70s to a straight A student. I'm currently, my lowest grade right now is a 90. So, yeah, well done. thank you. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Brittany Spillman. I've been a STAR student for four years now. I go to Cane Creek High School. I'm graduating this year. STAR has impacted my life tremendously. It's given me so many opportunities to open my eyes to so many different things. Um, from challenge courses to visiting colleges like Lone Star, St. Houston, University of Houston. I learned so much from being a STAR student. I learned about different colleges and having good communication. Also not to be afraid to ask questions because someone else has the same exact question that you have and they're just too afraid to ask. This experience and adventure motivated me to want to go to college, to open my eyes to what's out there after high school. After high school, I plan on going to Bethany College um, with a double major in biology and chemistry and a minor in theology. And I also have an athletic scholarship to go play for them. All right. Do what you want to be and who you want to be, because I did. The star counselors from Canny Creek High School are with us today, and we're going to honor Canny Creek first. Our seniors, Cindy Horn and Rochelle Perry, are here from Canny Creek High School. And our first student is Jared, Jared Brantner. Colton Lang. <laughs> Cynthia Ramirez. <laughs> Brittany Spielman. Our star counselor from Conroe High School with us tonight is Tiffany Arsenault. 
our student, Caitlin Dickerson. Molly Linton. From Hawk High School, we are honoring Jordan Hill. <laughs> Dylan Patrick. Michaela Warner. And Valerie Weathers. Our counselor from Oak Ridge High School tonight is Sean Matlock. And we'd like to recognize Chad Archie. <laughs> and Jack Boyko. <laughs> Our counselors from the Woodlands High School tonight are Karen Peary and Keisha Clark. <laughs> and we're recognizing Allison Bonanno. Riley Knudsen. <laughs> Daniela Omokwala. <laughs> and Crystal Solis. Thank you so much. Before we before we do them do the uh, handshake, I just wanted to say on behalf of Dr. Stockton and the board, congratulations to you guys. Oftentimes, we don't thank folks who like my grandma says, uh, we've come a mighty long ways, and uh, you guys have done just that. I mean, oftentimes we need to make sure that we address folks who started in a certain point in their lives, a certain point in their academic careers, and have since then come such a long way as you guys. So you can't say enough to congratulate you guys and give you guys an understanding and appreciation <laughs> of how proud we are that you guys have been able to, you know, push through, get it done, um, become more, you know, a, understanding of where you want to be career-wise and doing what it takes to get there. So congratulations. We're proud of you. Keep up the hard work and um, best things, best wishes for you guys in your next academic pursuit. Great job. Item 2C, Special District Recognition Ambassador Awards, Child Nutrition Department employees, Dr. Stockton. Hey, I'm excited to call Robin Hughes up to the podium, our Director of Child Nutrition, who will 
introduce our recipients. <clears throat> Good evening, Mrs. Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. Thank you for recognizing our Child Nutrition Ambassador Award winners tonight. Our first winner is Michelle Harding. <laughs> Michelle is the cafeteria manager at Patterson Elementary and has been with the district for five years. She's gone above and beyond this year to promote school breakfast to the students. She even organized a 50s themed breakfast and asked the students and staff to dress up to celebrate National School Breakfast Week. Mm -hmm. The turnout was amazing and the kids loved it. Mr. Patterson even showed up for the event. Aww. Michelle is always willing to help She's an excellent trainer and she serves quality meals to the students. She is an asset to the district. Our next recipient is Casey Williams. Casey is the manager at the Woodlands High School. She's been with the district for three years. She did an excellent job during the child nutrition audit this year, and she remained cool, calm, and collected. <laughs> Her demeanor never changes, even when times are stressful. She's friendly to the students and staff, and they truly appreciate her. She's very organized and runs the kitchen efficiently. She learns quickly and is a great trainer. Casey is a true professional and a positive representative for the district. Our next ambassador is Tracy Smith. Tracy is a new manager at Oak Ridge Elementary, but she's been with the district for three years. Even though Tracy is a new manager, the Oak Ridge Elementary kitchen passed the child nutrition audit with flying colors. She takes pride in her work and she truly cares about the students. She loves working for the department and it shows in her attitude. She's always pleasant and greets everyone with a smile. Tracy is dedicated to the district and we love having her on our team. Our next ambassador is Vira Jefferson. Vira is an associate at David Elementary. She's been with CISD for two years. She has a positive attitude as well as outstanding job performance. She's always smiling and has a can-do attitude every day. She adjusts to change with ease and enthusiasm. Her response to anything given to her is, we got this. <laughs> she always, she's always courteous to the students and staff. It's a pleasure to have in child nutrition. Our final ambassador is Maria Valdez de Correa. Maria has been with CISD for two years and she's an associate at Pete Junior High. She has such a pleasant attitude and welcomes the students each day. She's willing to work any assignment without question and follows instructions to a T. She works efficiently and can do anything she's asked to do. She helps everyone else in the kitchen when needed and she's very patient. We are so lucky to have her. So I'd like to just say a few things as well on behalf of the board. We, we want to personally say thank you for what you do we appreciate it you know I've got uh, I've got a couple of mouths to feed at my house and when they're hungry they're a bit really I can't imagine what you guys go through <laughs> but uh, we understand that child nutrition is is vital for their for their success they got to have full bellies to be able to go out there and perform and you guys make sure that they have those things taken care of and and there is from time to time when my wife's out of town my kids somehow slip out without their lunches and I get blamed for it but for some reason they get fed <laughs> you guys take care of them and we appreciate your dedication to those kids 
So thank you very much for what you do. This is very well deserved. Thank you. Item 2D, Special District Recognition Ambassador Awards Transportation Department employees. Great. I'm excited to bring up Sam Davila, Director of Transportation, to introduce our award winners. <laughs> That's always too high. Well, Ms. Bush, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, it is my distinct pleasure to... Uh, why don't we just pause just a minute? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Stockton, members of the board, <laughs> it's my pleasure to uh, announce or, or welcome this year's uh, recipients of the Ambassador Award for Transportation. Before I get started, though, I want to thank you all for allowing us to continue to do this Ambassador Award. It's very important, and uh, it recognizes our employees for the hard work that they do and uh, the challenges they face every day. So first of all, I'd like to start off with one of our uh, special needs teams. Um, I'm an emotional mess. I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, I might have to call Juan or Eric up here. Uh, Linda Massey and Eva Thatcher. Linda. <laughs> Linda is one of our special needs drivers, and uh, Eva, Eva sorry, is one of our monitors from East County. And let me read this real quick. Uh, that way I don't mess it up too bad. On, on October uh, 13th, uh, one of Ms. Massey's and Ms. Thatcher's special needs students had a seizure while they are on their way taking their kids to school. Ms. Thatcher noticed that the student was having the seizure and alerted Ms. Massey to the emergency. Ms. Massey immediately turned on her inside lights. It was about 7 o'clock in the morning, so um, she turned on the lights and pulled into a church parking lot. She radioed the East County Operations Center and called 911. While Ms. Thatcher quickly assessed the student and determined that she had to administer his medication, she did so flawlessly while Ms. Massey was keeping the other students calm and maintaining radio contact with the Operations Center. I had an opportunity to kind of watch the video and uh, it was incredible as, as to uh, how they were able to stay calm, keep the students calm, and do everything they needed to do to keep the students wow. safe. Uh, because of their quick thinking and following emergency protocols, the student received his medication as prescribed, which allowed him to be stable before the EMS could arrive. Their calm demeanor and emergency training contributed to saving the student's life. In addition, because of their great teamwork and their composure, they were able to keep the other students on the bus from panicking. Uh, if you've ever been on a special needs bus, uh, sometimes a change in atmosphere or environment like that can really cause a lot of stress on our students. Um, they did receive a call later from the mom letting them know that their, her son was doing fine and thanking them for doing the right thing. This was a wonderful example of how a driver and monitor special needs team work together to keep, um, keep our students safe. It is a great respect and gratitude uh, that I recommend them both for the CSD ambassador. <laughs> Our next <Not> recipient, <laughs> you got it. You're the first one, so you got to wait till everybody comes through. <laughs> Our next recipient is uh, Nora Morales. She's one of our operations specialists at our Oak Ridge Transportation Center. Nora has kind of like been our uh, security guard out there at, at the uh, <laughs> Oak Ridge Transportation Center. We uh, had some issues with some vandalism. Um, and uh, one evening, Nora uh, decided to go ahead and 
do a special trip before she left for the day to make sure that the buses were safe. Well, uh, she noticed uh, a student, a person, um, walk in the uh, yard when it was all closed. Uh, she approached the student and asked them what they were doing. Um, what eventually happened is the student left, then came back. She called CSD police. They responded quickly and uh, actually took care of the situation. And, and we appreciate her taking going an extra mile to make sure our buses are safe. Um, unfortunately, there was in the several weeks prior to that, there was seven thousand dollars, thousands of dollars of damage done. Buses not being able to run in the morning for routes and mechanics having to jump through hoops to get them fixed. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Ms. Morales also competes in our Texas Association uh, annual uh, school bus rodeo. And uh, <laughs> she competed in our regional rodeo. Believe it or not, our operations specialists do drive routes as well. <laughs> um, and so uh, she actually was, uh, got second place in the rodeo, and she's going to state this summer uh, in Frisco. We'll be representing our district and our region at the state competition. <laughs> <laughs> That competition actually consists of 11 different events and also a written test. So it, it's pretty strenuous and they have to do a lot of study and driving. Our next recipient is Dean Glassick. He's a driver trainer uh, from our Conroe Center. Actually, I think he's from the Woodland Center, right? We move him around quite a bit. <laughs> um, The following excerpt I would like to read from uh, one of our CSD police sergeants, uh, Sergeant Blakelock. Um, he was dispatched regarding an incident that while Dean was a driver for us, uh, not a trainer but a driver, had to handle um, a student that was becoming um, irritated and upset and, and Dean did so so well. Um, but this is what uh, Sergeant Blakelock wrote about when he watched the video and saw how Dean was able to handle the student and keep the situation calm. I watched the video and this compelled me to write you to let you know that Dean Glassick was quite impressive in how he remained calm and addressed the students. Mr. Glassick was quick to address the safety issue of the student moving around on the bus while he was moving. He then addressed the rules and remained very professional while deflecting uh, from the threatening speech and screaming of the student. At some point the student began making physical con contact with him by attempting to reach over him to hit the door release button so she could exit the bus. He carefully deflected her arm so that she was able to not do so and very calmly contacted someone on the radio and called the police as the student's anxiety escalated. The information he gave was precise and succinct. This is a fine display of professionalism and calmness under pressure that the district needs, his, uh, needs from its employees in a crisis situation. And I would love for Mr. Glassick to be recognized for his efforts. So we would like to recognize Dean Glassick for his efforts. <laughs> I'd like to also add that since then, uh, we had an opening in training, and Dean applied, and he did uh, get a promotion to a trainer. So he's one of our school bus trainers. And last but not least, Don Poole. She was one of our supervisors from the Woodland Transportation Center. Her situation is a little unique. Um, to say the least. Um, <laughs> our supervisors have to drive as well, so you know, uh, just one of those things. Uh, well, while she was driving for uh, College Park, uh, she was at the uh, at the school, and they had a lockdown. Had a report of a student uh, that shouldn't have been on the premises on the premises, and um, he had broken into a car. And um, one of the APs recognized the student, and all the students were moving toward, or all the drivers and everybody were moving towards the campus. And uh, she heard the AP call out to the student, he took off. Well, both Don and the AP pursued the student and tackled the student. <laughs> yeah. Good job. And uh, detained the student. And uh, while the police got there, found out that the student did have a weapon on him. And, uh, but uh, everything worked out for the best. She better not ever do that again. <laughs> um, I need my supervisors too bad, uh, but uh, it just goes to show how much our employees care about the safety of the other employees and also the kids. So thank you, Don, for what you've done.
Mr. Davila and ambassadors, I just want to say a few short words. One of those is that the, the title is ambassador. You know, we have ambassadors throughout the world that represent the United States of America, and they basically speak on behalf of the U.S. in those countries. You do the same thing each and every day. You represent Conroe Independent School District to all of our students, to all of those parents, all of those guardians, all of those children. Uh, and, and every day you get up and you get up early and you stay late and uh, you probably work throughout the day uh, too and you take care of our children. I mean, I remember when my oldest, uh, we took her to kindergarten and dropped her off. That was a scary thing. Having to drop them off on a school bus and knowing that they're going to be taken care of knowing that they're going to get to the right place 100% of the time is extremely important and it's extremely satisfying as a parent to know that when I drop my child off, I know that they're cared for, I know that they're loved, and I know that they're with a professional. And I just want to say thank you on behalf of the board and the entire district. We appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Good job. I would have done the same thing. I did the Ms. Godfrey, has anyone signed up to address the board? No one has signed up. All right, we'll move forward then. Um, with no objections, I'm going to actually move item uh, 8A, <coughs> the naming of the principal of Moorhead Junior High up. Dr. Stockton. All right, I'm always very excited. Uh, this, is, this has been a great meeting to recognize so many special people. And I get to recognize one more with my recommendation to the board. Uh, for the principal at Moorhead Junior High School, replacing Dr. Stickler, who went to Caney Creek High School. Um, I'm recommending Roberto Garcia to you uh, to fill that position. Mr. Garcia is currently uh, the school safety coordinator and district hearing officer. Previous to that, he was assistant principal at Conroe High School, and previous to that, he was a junior high principal in another district. So I'm pleased to make that recommendation to you. So moved. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Congratulations, Mr. Garcia. Uh, Mrs. Bush, uh, members of the board, Dr. Stockton, uh, thank you for your vote of confidence. Um, I'm excited about this opportunity. Uh, Dr. Stickler has spoken very highly of the student staff and parents of, of Moorhead Junior High, and I'm honored to join the, the Panther family. Um, uh, I plan to continue to build on the great things that uh, Dr. Stickler and, and the staff at Moorhead have, have already begun and uh, continue to, uh, uh, to, again, make the school the best it can be and uh, uh, work to make the students successful in life and in high school. Uh, and uh, again, I, I want to say that the last five years uh, in Conroe I, ISD have been amazing and I uh, wanted to thank uh, Dr. Knoll and uh, Dr. Weatherly, uh, Dr. Hines and, and uh, Mr. Gorka. Uh, working under each of them, I, I learned a lot and uh, they're uh, excellent, uh, they were excellent uh, principals when I, when I worked for them. Um, I want to thank uh, my friends and coworkers who are here tonight and uh, show support. And uh, also wanted to uh, introduce my family, if I might. Uh, can you guys stand up? Please, yes. <laughs> hey. and it's not my wife, Christy, and uh, Andrew, and uh, Claire and Emily. And uh, Andrew on the way up here said, uh, Dad, no pressure. He said, he said, just say you're honored about everything and it'll be all right. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and so, uh, again, thank you. <laughs> Good job. All right, um, item three is the consent agenda. I have had a request to pull item E so that we can, may discuss it separately and vote on it separately. Any other items need removed? Move the adoption of the consent agenda items A through D. As Second. Opposed. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion passes. Item 3E, um, it's considered the approval of bank resolution extending depository contract. Dr. Stockton, I know this is extending to uh, Wood Forest Bank, and I believe, Mr. Sanders, you wanted this yes, pulled out. Yes, I, I just asked that I, uh, I wanted to be able to vote on the consent agenda, and because my employer is Wood Forest National Bank, I will be abstaining from any discussion and vote on this item. All right. Uh, do I have a motion for item 3E? So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? <coughs> All those opposed? And abstentions? All right, thank you very much. Item 4A, consider approval of the mascot and school colors for Grand Oaks High School and York Junior High. Dr. Stockton. Hey, Dr. Noll, if you'll come present that item. Well, good evening, President Bush, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. Uh, as you'll recall, last month we uh, came forward and shared with you as an information item the school colors and mascots for Grand Oaks, York, and Bradley. And tonight we come back to seek your approval of those items. and. I'm going to share with you tonight uh, some uh, early desi logo designs for each campus that will sort of represent the, the school colors and the mascot. These are not final products at all. These are working, uh, working designs. So we start with Grand Oaks High School. And uh, as we discussed last month, the recommended school colors for Grand Oaks High School are royal blue, orange, and gray. And the mascot is the, are the Grizzlies, so the Grand Oaks Grizzlies. And you can see here just a few of the mascot early designs. And then for York Junior High, royal, blue, and orange, and also uh, utilizing the, the Grizzlies mascot. <coughs> so at this time, I would seek your approval on the school colors and mascot for Grand Oaks and York. I move we approve as presented. Second. All right. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Motion passes. All right. You, you know, Mr. It's not the Gators. Mr. Uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, <laughs> wrong shade of orange. Uh, <laughs> I was waiting for that discussion. <laughs> understood. And then uh, for Bradley Elementary, a much friendlier bear. Uh, uh, for, 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 the, for the Bradley Bears. <laughs> Didn't we have one two sticking out? Yeah. <laughs> it's Bradley just friendly. <laughs> so for Bradley Elementary School, uh, royal blue and gray. And they are also uh, the Bears, re recommended it to be the Bears. So at this time, we would seek your approval for their school colors and mascots. So, so that's moved. item 4B. So moved. Second. All right. All those in favor? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. We, we were going to mess with you and, and turn them around and see if anybody noticed. <laughs> All right, item 4C, consider <coughs> approval of the guaranteed maximum price amendment for Conroe High School renovations project and authorize the superintendent to negotiate and execute the contract documents. Dr. Stock. Hey, Mr. Foster, would you come present that item, please? <coughs> President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton, it's my pleasure to bring forward for your approval or your consideration and approval of the guaranteed maximum price amendment for our Conroe High School renovations project, and then authorize Dr. Stockton to negotiate and execute the contract documents. To start off, I want to tell you a little bit about what this project entails because it's fairly complex. Uh, for Conroe High School, what you're seeing on your screen now is a, is a uh, photo of what the campus looks like as it sits today. So we're going to flip it around on you a little bit and look at it from the north so we're, we're 
from the north looking south so you can see Wilson Road cut through the middle of our current campus. And what we're looking at for this particular scope of work, so we're starting, uh, what's driving the, the project is an, a need for an MEP overhaul, so it's mechanical electrical plumbing overhaul of the main campus. In doing so, uh, we're going to uh, build a central plant so to consolidate the chillers, the boilers, and the pumps and everything that feed these campuses. And we're also working on driveway additions. So Wilson Road is now a private driveway. It's no longer a public thoroughfare. So we're going to take advantage of that and we're going to, to facilitate this project, build a classroom addition that, is sit, that will sit on what is Wilson Road today. This is what this is going to look like when we're done uh, with this particular classroom addition. And the, the classroom addition is necessary for multiple reasons. One is to give us space to put students in while we're renovating the remainder of the building. And we've also put some thought and some uh, master plan uh, effort into this so that we don't build ourselves a roadblock for future projects at some point in the future. So we hope to one day give you an idea of a, a, a contiguous building for Connor High School that crosses Wilson Road so we have one big campus, not a bunch of buildings that have been uh, put together over the course of the life of that campus. So that's a little bit of a description of what we're doing on that job. So at this time, I'd like to remind you that in February of this 2016, we elected uh, or we selected Ellisor Constructors, which are here tonight uh, with us, to be the construction manager at risk uh, for this project. So since then, working with PBKR Architect, Ellisor has advertised to the uh, public, taking bids from the trade marketplace, put together a guaranteed maximum price proposal for this project of $49,087,468. This project did come in just under our budget target, so I'm happy to report that. And at this time, we're requesting your approval of this guaranteed maximum price amendment. So moved. Second. All right. And then discussion. I have a question, Mr. Foster. How many additional square feet of classroom space are we adding? The the classroom addition is approximately 92,000 square feet. Okay. So it's got uh, science labs, art labs, and classroom space in it to okay. facilitate the... I, I, I couldn't, in reading the materials, I couldn't see exactly <clears throat> how many classrooms we were adding and what classrooms. So it's science? We've got nine science labs, okay. four art labs, and 38 classrooms. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Foster, oh, um, during the uh, MEP renovations of that existing building, will that building be usable for student use, or is it going to be done in phases, build the additional classroom, and then vacate the existing building for the MEP renovations? Well, and, that, and that's kind of on point. We are building the classroom additions to give us capacity to move students into, so we can vac vacate portions of the existing building while we do those renovations. I, I just have question off Mr. Sanders instead of square feet tell me how many seats you know I mean how many students can those do, do those I mean I, I relate to seat you know how many do these how many do these two halls and are we taking each hall down one at a time or both down at, I, when I say halls I mean like thoroughfares or whatever you want to call them they, they have two stories each right correct the the new addition will actually connect to the existing hallways that Science cross Science. cross the uh, the most recent addition to Connor High School, uh, we're building approximately a thousand seats, okay. and so that that capacity changes as different classes move into those spaces over the course of, of the life of this project. Mm -hmm. Okay, but my 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 question kind of comes back to why are we building unless we need more science rooms? We're not taking down the science wing; it's new. Why are we building science labs in the new and that are replacing English and math and? Spanish and whatever art or whatever. Well, the the uh, aside from the MEP renovation of this project, we're trying to set ourselves up for some work in the future, some an, an additional master plan. So this this classroom addition may not be necessary for capacity today, but it will be necessary to uh, to build a uh, a bigger or not bigger but a better, more efficient Connor High School at some point in the future. Thank you. That's a great name. Appreciate it. Right. Question for you down here. Go ahead. Um, during the process, will we, will we be losing any programs or any classes like the, the agriculture or the welding or any of those? Will they they're going to be displaced a little bit? Or are we going to lose any of those programs? Uh, with the way the project is phased, we should not lose any programs during the course of the construction. We are actually working with our CTE department to increase welding capacity while we're under under this with this work. So we we're actually gaining some program space rather than losing it. 
it is, uh, I mean, the new classroom addition allows us a lot of flexibility on the campus mm -hmm. to move students in and out of as we need to displace programs where they currently are so we can upgrade their systems. So the auto mechanic and all those areas back there, they'll be, they'll be able to function and move, keep continue moving? Like, those classrooms are growing. So yeah. during this time, we'll still Absolutely. be able to facilitate and, and, those uh, kids. And I've got one more picture for you. Or I thought, thought I did. Um, I've seen that one. He's director of planning and construction. Not technology. Yes, same, same. Okay. One last question while you're looking for that. Certainly. The, uh, uh, the, one of the things that, that the LSOR uh, contractor has been very instrumental in is phasing to get the to keep Wilson Road usable even though we're covering part of it with a building uh, we will keep that driveway they're going to reroute some of it around the existing building so that we can keep district access to those programs in the back of the, the, the site so the CT building in the back of the program the challenge course uh, so the band hall the rotunda and the annex are all still accessible throughout the course of the project okay Thank you. But you will cease to have that open to traffic during the day once Correct. this occurs. Right. Once this like starts. It is today. Right. During the normal school year, the gates are closed on Wilson Road. Essentially, they're going to remain closed and only be open for for CISD traffic. Okay. What's the projected completion date of this $49 million portion? We, we are <clears throat> projecting a, a, a project schedule of approximately 30 months. So we're looking at, at the end of 2019, early 2020 for a, a completion date. And how long does the new building take of that time before you can take the other down? Uh, yeah, I wish you would ask a simple question. Yeah. <laughs> the, the new building itself John, is, guarantee it. <clears throat> the new building itself can, takes about 14 months to construct, but we've got three or four months of existing utility work to do along Wilson Road before we can actually start on the new building itself. So uh, we're looking at a, a new building turnover for use in spring break of 2018, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere, and liberally speaking, between Thanksgiving and spring break of uh, 2018. It's quick. Or I, I mean, I said ask a simple question. My, my spring break calendar of 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, Spring break of 18. You mean 19. Summer of 18. Yes. He means 19. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's so Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving 18. Spring break. Spring, break. spring break 19. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I apologize. We got really excited <laughs> over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Anything else? All right. All those in favor? Motion passes. Right. Item 4D, capital improvement update. I will do my best to not stumble on my words here. <laughs> uh, but to, to bring you up to speed on what we do have underway throughout the district, uh, Starting with the Woodlands College Park. Again, this is a project that is constructed by Mr. Ellisor, who's in the room with us tonight. So this project uh, is nearing completion. So we should take full possession of the building at the end of the month, or the first full week. So it's the end of the month is the midweek, so the, the first of June, essentially. So the, the exterior of the building is rapidly wrapping up. The masonry is done. You can see the crews on site working on the flat work, the sidewalks, and tying the paving back into this new building. Uh, as we speak. <clears throat> Interior of the building, <coughs> our robotics Texas Torque team has started moving some of their stuff in. The contractors got things protected as they're working through their punch list items. So the carpet and all the finishes are in and they're just working on touch-ups as at this time. Our network operation center, which is our data infrastructure for this whole district, uh, this project is on schedule and the uh, technology department is working on the deployment of the technology equipment to fill these racks in this building. Those buckets aren't for catching water, are they? They are not for catching water. That is absolutely true. We have taken great pains to keep water of any kind out of that particular <laughs> space. Uh, we spent the last month working on the electrical infrastructure, so you're seeing uh, the backup generators for this system that were installed over the past month, and uh, that process is moving along well. So we anticipate finishing it on, on time this summer. Our, our life cycle of 2017 project, we're working on 22 campuses over the course of this summer. Uh, we've Our major work has happened at Galatis, where we've been working on re-roofing that building, so that is nearing its completion. Likewise, at Bush, that project is progressing as well, uh, moving forward to replacement of the roof, uh, the, both flat and the metal roofs on that campus. 
Haley is next in line for their roof this summer. So over the next few weeks, as school ends and summer starts, we'll be mobilizing at the Haley campus. And we've got uh, approximately 17 additional campuses to work on over the course of summer that are minor scopes of work, some flooring, some exit signs, things of that nature over the course of the summer. Bush's roof looks very good. Thank you. <laughs> I wish I could tell you I did it, but we, we hired competent contractors <laughs> to handle that for us. At Knox Junior High in our Woodlands Transportation Center project, uh, where we're at Knox, we're adding 10 science classrooms or science labs. The building infrastructure is going in place now. So you see the masonry block wall, which is the, the main portion of the exterior walls is in place. They're starting the veneer brick over the next several weeks. So that building will, will close up and become watertight over the next uh, three to four weeks. Inside of that building, the, the, the mechanical electrical plumbing systems are being installed. This project is on schedule, scheduled to use in August of this coming summer. Uh, so when the students return for next school year, these classrooms will be avail available to them. Elsewhere on that campus, at the field house, we're expanding the field house to match the capacity of the, uh, of the campus for their programs. Mm -hmm. This is a masonry building, so the masonry actually holds up the roof. So the masonry is, is almost complete, and the roof will be being constructed over the next couple of weeks. Inside that building, the partitions and the systems are, are being expanded to tie into that new, new area, and it is on schedule as well for them to use uh, when the students return for their practices at the end of the summer. At the Woodlands Transportation Center, the, the building addition has been delivered and erected. And on the inside of that building, they're working to tie the new section of the building to the existing section of the building. Again, that project is on schedule. It's for our bus drivers and staff to use when they return for the summer uh, runs in the beginning of August for training and, and other efforts as they get ready for school to start. For our safety and security project, all this work is above the ceiling now, so it's, it's hard to see. I can talk about it a little bit. We've been working on four campuses since the project has been approved over the last couple of months, and we've got nine additional campuses where we're doing security vestibule access control, security camera upgrades, server upgrades, different infrastructure related to safety and security of the campuses on those. Over the course of that project, we'll touch 13 campuses, which this is phase two of four phases that we're working through. At Lucille Bradley Elementary School, uh, this project is on schedule, scheduled to open in August. Uh, this coming summer for our students. Uh, the project is, is nearing its point of uh, being ready for final clean. So you can see from this picture, the work going on currently is ir irrigation, preparing for the landscape on the outside of the building and working up to the, uh, the front door entry. Inside the building, uh, the finishes are, are really taking place and being installed and beginning to clean up. So you're looking at a picture of the gymnasium here and one of the, uh, the fine arts classrooms as we've begun Begin the process of working our way through that building, doing punch list, touch up, things of that nature. We will take it over for furniture in July, and I believe we've got a, a tour scheduled with, with the board in, uh, in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. At Grand Oaks High School, again, this project <coughs> is on schedule, scheduled to open in August of 2018. You can see from the aerial photograph, the building is essentially uh, erected. They're working on the exterior skin now. The academic portion of the building, which is the, on the left-hand side of your screen, is uh, nearing a dry condition. So the windows are going in, the roof is on, uh, the, the waterproofing membranes are on that building. So there's work going on the inside. You'll notice the new work starting on the site are the athletic facilities. So the baseball, the softball, the football, the practice fields, things of that nature. Those contractors have mobilized and are on site now. So you'll see the, the uh, eastern end of the project start to develop over the coming months. Interior of that building, partitions, mechanical systems, things of that nature, classrooms, offices are all taking shape. So it is proceeding as we would expect it to at this point. Uh, and as I said, with the windows and everything going in in the academic portion, we're able to move forward to drywall and finishes. So you'll start to see some of the, the final colors of this building over the next uh, few months. At Flex 18, which is our most recent project we mobilized on, we have successfully cleared this site. <laughs> uh, if you note, this project is just south of the uh, high school in the Woodson's Reserve subdivision. And you can see from this photograph here, the building itself is taking shape in the dirt. They're doing the, the uh, select fill material for the building pad. And this week, uh, the foundations for the, the drilled and ring foundations are being installed. Uh, so it should, should start Wednesday or Thursday, and it will be progressing as we would expect on schedule and that is my update thank you mr foster thank you <clears throat> all right item 5a consider approval of the 27 
2018 employee group health plan. Dr. Stockton. Hey, Darren Rice, if you'll come present that recommendation, please. Good evening, President Bush, members of the board, and Dr. Stockton. It is my pleasure to recommend the Board of Trustees approve the employee medical coverage rates and plan design for the self-funded health insurance program. The Employee Benefits Committee voted unanimously to recommend the medical coverage rates and plan design to the board. I would like to thank the Employee Benefits Committee, Dr. Kathy Sharples, Paula Green, Tiffany Matfeld, and the District Health Insurance Consultant, Mr. Terry Brown, for their hard work on the district's health insurance program. The district's self-funded group health insurance program was restructured for 2014-2015, and annual adjustments have been made through subsequent years to provide a quality health plan at a reasonable cost to the district employees. Once again, due to continued rise of medical and prescription drug costs of 9.9% and 14.7% respectively, the plan must again be modified to remain sound. Medical and prescription plan designs are recommended for change along with premium increases for the 2017-2018 plan year. CISD believes all of, all of its plans will continue to be offered at competitive rates, particularly the Aetna Hold Health Plan, which utilizes the Memorial Hermann ACO and Aetna Select Networks. If the plan changes are approved, the total project projected health plan cost will be $47.6 million, which is a 5.59% increase over the previous year with the district funding 58% of the health plan cost and employee premiums funding the remaining 42%. Um, just a few notes, the district is increasing its contribution to the health insurance program from $440 to $446 per employee per month. Our recommended premiums and plan designs compare favorably to our peer districts in TRS Active Care 2. Our proposed 2017-2018 rates are substantially below the TRS Active to care rates for 2016-2017. If I can flip this slide, I, this slide here just shows our comparison with other districts, and these are their 16-17 rates. They're all members of TRS CARE. We know TRS is in trouble, about $2 billion short last I heard, so we know these rates are going to be moving up for them as well. <clears throat> Within the Aetna Hold Health Plan, we are recommending a slight increase to the out-of-pocket maximums in the Aetna Select Plan, or tier, tier 2, and this will just continue to steer employees to our best-performing plan, which is the Memorial Hermann ACO, or Tier 1. The recommended plan design also includes the high deductible, opening the high-deductible plan to new members. It has been closed for the past several years. This will provide employees with another medical insurance option and allow CSD to meet ACA affordability requirements. The recommended formulary change from the Aetna Premier Plus to the Aetna Value will save the plan approximately $1 million. This is a move from Aetna's most liberal or open formulary to one slightly more restrictive to move employees more to prefer generic brand drugs. Uh, Mr. Cherry Brown is here tonight and he can help answer any questions that y'all might have. All right. Do I have a motion first? Motion to approve as, yeah. as presented. Second. All right. Discussion. Mr. Mr. Brown, um, question. Do, do you uh, heard rumors that TRS is going to make certain districts depart? I have. And uh, it, and is it the large ones? Yes, well, that's just what I've heard. That's, that's the rumor at this point. And, and do you know what size that's going to I mean, not that that is going to directly affect us, but it, everything affects <clears throat> right. the it's, marketplace. It, right. So it's rumored at 1,000. A thousand employees and a uh, thousand employees that more. they want them to go out. Uh, I just do you have an opinion of what that's going to be? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, like I said, there's it, it, opposite and equal reaction. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's I do. The, that's all I'm I, you know, it's it, it seems, um, by the way, this makes it's all the sense of the world. I don't have a question about what you're going to okay. do. I think it's great, right. <laughs> I, I, uh, I really think them uh, trying to run off the large groups is, is not a great idea. I, I think it's, uh, you know, you're, you're really losing a lot of your scale, your economies of scale. And uh, I understand why they're doing it because a lot of the large districts have really been killing them. 
but I, I think they've got to do something else. Um, they're in they're in bad turmoil. I'd like to again <laughs> commend this board. Uh, some of you were were, uh, were here when we you made the decision not to move to TRS. That was a struggle, and I, I know that was as I've mentioned several times. I thought it was a siren song that the, it luring us to the rocks, and I, it really has turned out to be that way for a lot of school districts. Terry. So us staying on our own, uh, we have a, a really good plan. We've done well, great benefits, and very competitive prices. Yeah, and, and also on the same same note, every district that we talked to, that when we were getting their rates, they were wanting or wishing they were in our well, well, in sure. our shoes. So it's been the, it's been the case in the before that they couldn't exit because of the tail. Right. Right. I mean, so right. so I mean, they didn't know what their their liability was going to be. So now they're going to kick them out, and I don't know how <laughs> that's going to work. But uh, I still I think they have to change the law to to do that. Uh, there is there is a bill there's a there, bill right but I, I do not know what it is in the progress yeah. right now like i said it, 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 nothing happens in a vacuum around here i mean yeah. that's right it, it will affect it, it, etna and everybody else and prescription right. drugs and everything else when they you hit bet. the marketplace you bet i i just want to commend i know that um any increases is, is difficult um on our employees and i know that they they felt the increase that we had to do last year I, I commend the committee and you and Darren for all of your work on this nice. because I, I do think that this is a good plan when you look at how much we contribute compared to other districts uh, I'm very proud of our Should district be. and yeah. our commitment to our employees so um, by comparison we're so much better off as you say being on our own and not in TRS but I think this makes perfect sense and Fully behind it. Have these numbers been made available to the employees <laughs> at large or to TSTA or any of those type of groups for feedback? These these numbers currently have only been shown to the Employee Benefits Committee. We wanted right. I just you know didn't know if the employees were aware of what we were discussing. We, but how many and, and how many employees the, are on the Employee Benefits Committee? Uh, There's we have all feeder zone about thirty thirty every feeder I mean, zone yeah. every auxiliary department. Yeah, oh, we have representatives. And no, when no, would we have no leaks? Decision on that. <laughs> <laughs> Affordability is important, but also being in the market on your deductibles and your coinsurance levels yeah. is, is is why the plan is doing better. Yeah, and I'm all for affordable, but out of the market drives utilization, and and it's going to catch you let you going or coming. Out of it. You don't have a choice, and so while affordability is great, and I I. I Second that motion. Uh, I, I do appreciate y'all working hard to get the get the plan in the market because it, it otherwise it's going to kill us. Right. So, a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, do we have for the claims that come in? Do we have a system that we use that analyzes those claims? Oh sure. What what system do we use for there? That? There's an internal system uh, that that Edna uses. Plus, we had a an a, a external audit last year mm -hmm. with Sagebrush out of Dallas that audited all of our our claims, and we ha had virtually uh, no claims errors whatsoever uh, last year from Edna. Uh, and they they have uh, guidelines that they have to hit on on claims payments and accuracy and so on, or they they owe us money back on our admin fees. Okay, and then. Um on the on the members that are eligible so a lot of companies that are our size and bigger that offer self-funded plans um, they do audits to find out if if a spouse has coverage elsewhere and ask them to go elsewhere do we do that as well we we did one several years ago we used asc um and we have just spoke um benefits and and i've Got together and we're, we're looking at doing another audit yeah, we're, on, on, on spouses. Uh, we're, I'm exploring that right now to do it again. Okay. Well, my employee who is the husband of a, you know, CISD employee, I informed him last year that he wasn't allowed to be on her plan anymore and he did go on mine. So <laughs> we're good there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> All right. Anything else? I just have a comment. It's more than, I, I still struggle with raising a teacher's deduct I mean her mm. cost premium thank you a hundred dollars a month and then we're probably going to end up giving them a hundred dollar a month raise and basically they're 
at zero and it's flat. It, it, it just, it, I'm not saying I'm going to vote against it. I'm just, I, I struggle with, is there a way that we, I, I know that the benefits committee has done a lot. I, I just, I'm trying to challenge the, that fact. Is there something better we could do for our, for our employees? When I think about the health clinic, we did keep that, that office visit at $10, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So they go see a doctor there, it's 10 bucks, but they're still paying the hundred and even if it's an individual, they're paying $148 a month. Yes, sir. And they're not having to pay the $30 office visit but, and they're still getting to see competent medical personnel. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I just, I, I, I struggle with that. I mean, on a percentage basis, $20, over 100, that's a, over a 20% increase, almost a 20% increase in premiums per month just for an individual. And then when you get in employees with children, you know, you see they're $56. So it's it's more than a 10% increase. I don't increase. have last year's increases available yeah. with me, but these are yeah. substantially less than what. Yeah, I, I understand. What I, 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 yeah, I know y'all have done a great job. I'm not criticizing anything that anyone's done. I just struggle with trying to provide that benefit at something that we can as a yeah. district that, that is that, that is a struggle that I know that, that I know. we all I just, are fa I mean I just as, want to publicly say that, that I, you know, I, I it's a struggle for me too yes sir. because I want to make sure that we provide we have great professionals and I want to provide them great quality benefits and I think we are I just I just hate to see the cost keep going up and up and up and up that's well, my comment I, I'd say we, we are indeed you are indeed providing that and everybody in the entire industry and across the whole country is struggling with this as you know all of you know our, our, our real increase in costs in the last couple of years have been the the, the prescription drug uh, increase and we're struggling with that this change that we're making this year uh, saving a million dollars and it's really not a whole lot of disruption compared to what we what we could have done we kept all the same pharmacies in place we just moved some of the formularies around and really, you know, if you take a look at our at our benefits, a thousand dollar deductible yeah. uh, is That's unbelievable true. these days. It's very low. It really hey. is. Yeah. And you've got the clinic that people can go for ten bucks. Right. You have very low uh, office visit copays. I mean, the and the ACO that we've got here really is performing outstanding, uh, outstandingly for uh, compared to. Uh, anybody else in the marketplace? So I just hope none of my clients in the group health business see these premiums. <laughs> What's the uh, yeah. incremental increase? If you were to make no increases to premiums, what increase would the district have to absorb? Well, you'd you'd have to the five and a half percent. I know two point six million dollars. Two point six million, right? Mm -hmm. mm. Which isn't that what the new funding is? Yes, sir. That's yeah. that's what the new funding. Okay, that's the new funding. Yes. Yeah. So on the going back to the pharmacy. Um, just a couple questions. Do you know if we participate in any rebates or do we have guaranteed contracts on the pharmacy? That's what it's going to be. Or did we, are we participating in any rebate programs? Yeah, we, we have always participated in rebates. We have, have made a, an agreement with them, with, with Aetna, to reduce the admin fees uh, to give us a guaranteed reduction rather than uh, rebates that can, that can fluctuate. So, yes, we do all that. We, we negotiate all those things uh, each and every year. Right. Does Aetna have all three of the pieces, the stop loss, the pharmacy, and the admin? As yes. Well? They do? Yes. What is our stop loss deductible? Uh, 550. 550? Do we have very many claims over that? You know? It depends on the year. <laughs> this past year. Uh, this, Number three. Yeah. <laughs> right. So it, it, it fluctuates. Darren, just so I'm clear. You said 2.6 million. That's the increase as it sits now with the premiums increasing as they are presented. If you increase those, all those column, well, it's not Excel, the change column to zero all the way down, what would net net our additional funding be? Is it twice that? Uh, no, so we would have to, the district would have to add 2.6 million dollars. The district would shoulder all of that. All what he's saying is we're doing a part of it. Uh, the, our current funding level, if you look at it, correctly is basically $45 million. And the funding recommendation based on Aetna's book of business is the $47.6 million. So that, that would be the $2.6 million additional money that we're, that, that we're having to generate through the board increasing their contribution and employee rate changes. 
Okay. I, I think his question is, what would that number be if there was absolutely no change to the employee contribution? It would be the same 2.6. It would be the same 2.6, but instead of 446. The no, none of it is would be the employees. Yeah, yeah, the employees. No, no, that would be attributable. Okay. That would be the right. adequate, adequate question. Mm -hmm. Did I understand you say on the committee there's a representatives of about 30? Yes, sir. Okay. So, you know, we can kind of speculate as what feedback may be, but what, is, what has been their feedback to? We, well, we have one here. Well, <laughs> it was unanimous, it was a unanimous <laughs> recommendation. Yeah, unanimous. so that's, I mean, I guess that's right. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. we, we got the unanimous recommendation. You know, they are employees. They they feel the pain. You, you know, they, they feel, yeah. the, you know, just, just to echo right. Mr. Sanders' comments, you know, that, that whole committee feels that. And and so, you know, they've worked very hard to come up with yeah. a recommendation that they feel is, is, is appropriate. And I know one person on the committee who was very vocal last year. Uh, to me personally about the the shift we had to make and if that individual has voted for this that tells me something um i have to say that it means a great deal the effort what i struggle with is why the high deductible plan um isn't much lower and yet the deductible also isn't much higher <laughs> Welcome to a high deduction. <laughs> They've never been in the money. It's, it, it, <laughs> it's just a hard balance. All of yeah. this, all of this is, and I understand that. I understand y'all's issues with the premiums as well, and wanting wanting to shield and protect the employees from the rate increases, because the the raises aren't that aren't that big. But let me just say that uh, um, I, I believe if you if you say no increase that you, you take away the reality of what's going on in the, in the marketplace and people need to understand that this stuff is going up year after year after year. We actually, I, I think, got into a little bit of trouble by foregoing some of those increases in, in the past years, that we should have taken some increases on the employee and the dependent sides when we didn't because we didn't really need it. We had a, we had a surplus, we had some money in the bank, and we, we went through that seven million we had in about uh, 18 months. So I think it's important that they understand and see that this goes up year after year and see what's going on in the marketplace and what other people experience. They still are well below what anybody else is, is seeing, any of my clients. Yeah. A 5.5% increase, I don't, I don't have anybody yeah. that had 5.5% increase. I have a few more questions. I know we're, I don't mean to belabor this, but this is obviously something that's near and dear to all of us here. So how long have we been with Aetna? And has been our administrator for about 15 years. 15 years. And we, but we, we bid them periodically. Every, when was the last time we years. bid Aetna? It's I just think, been a few years. I think yeah. three, three years, three years ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. So three years ago we bid them, but we didn't bid them. We haven't bid them lately. Well, we had a five-year contract. Five-year contract. Five-year contract. Five contract. Right. Aetna has done really a, a, a very fine job for us, and uh, we've had almost no uh, complaints, uh, no claims errors, no no problems with employees having uh, administrative issues or uh, trouble at all with that. Now they've done a good job for us. How, how come we don't offer an HSA? The HSA is part of the high deductible plan. There is an HSA part in, in part of the, the high deductible. Plan. Of the two thousand dollars. So the, you can go back. Cause what's the, what's the deductible for the HSA? Is it two thousand uh, dollars? This Family year or individual? Yeah. Individual in, deductible. Individual in network is two point five. It's will be. Will be. Yeah. It's going to be two thousand five hundred. Individual in network deductible. And so, do we contribute anything towards an HSA for the employees to encourage them to go the HSA route? No. No. Okay. No. no. So, what's the? What is the? Um, that's that's the, there isn't. Uh -huh. And there isn't in the public marketplace either. There's For what? Very, unless the unless the employer ponies up the deductible or some money or something so that they can save it tax deferred, there is no advantage to a high, high deductible health plan. Harry, correct me if I'm wrong. If I'm speaking junk, no. tell me. No. But there is no there. The price has never been in the market versus you know a, a high deductible plan otherwise. Well, I understand that, but HSA accounts HSA. 
is something that is more and more employers are leaning towards because the medical loss ratio is so much better in an HSA account, encouraging people to go the HSA route. Well, you can argue if you want to, but I can I'm not arguing. Okay. I, I, but my question was going to be, what is the motion that we have right now? To approve as presented. To approve. Is this also approving the funding, or is this approving the plan? The plan, which in <laughs> which so by, the default, by default, by default, you approve funding. funding. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Motion set. Anything else? All right. All those in favor? All right. Motion passes. Good job, Mr. Ryan. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank I know that's a painful topic. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, financial reports. All right. Now we'll move to the financial statements uh, for the month of April. Once again, these statements will include the general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we'll look at this evening is the balance sheet. The balance sheet includes our assets, our liabilities, and our fund balances for the district. Each month, we like to look at our cash and investments. And once again, we'll concentrate on our general fund. We have $500 cash on hand. We have bank deposits of $383,000. We have investments in the pools of $149 million. We have other investments less than a year of $75.4 million. And our longer term investments with TCG Investment Advisors. $51.2 million for total cash and investments in the general fund of $276 million. Just to look at property tax collections real quick, uh, still ahead of where we were last year, so we feel confident that we'll reach our 100% goal there. The next statement we'll look at is our income statement. The income statement includes our revenues and expenditures and fund balances. Revenues are broken down into three categories. That is our local and intermediate sources state program revenues and federal program revenues <clears throat> and we can take a look at our expenditures uh, by major category as you can see in the general fund largest expenditure is payroll we're very people intensive business debt service fund paying our debt service child nutrition is supplies and materials and self-funded insurance is contracted services Our projected fund balance in the general fund is the same as last month. We're projecting an increase of about $9.5 million. Projected fund balance uh, for debt service is an increase of $4.6 million. Our projected fund balance in child nutrition remains the same, about an increase of about $82,000. Our 2015 bond referendum status update, we currently have expended and encumbered $287.5 million. We have an estimate to complete of $229.3 million, giving us a project forecast of $516.8 million. That's leaving us uh, with about $3.4 million in contingency for a grand total of $520 million. Update on our self-funded insurance. Uh, so far for the year, we've had total revenues right at $30 million. We've had total expenses of $26.7 million, leaving us with revenues over expenses of $3.3 million. I think if you notice, March and April both have been very close to, to the break-even point, and we're moving into those heavy, heavy utilization months. So keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> and participation at the, at the Wellness Center, uh, we've had right at 3,500 patients visit our center. Um, good news if you haven't, if you haven't already heard, uh, we are looking to open the North Clinic on June 5th. We've got the contract signed, and we're hoping to get that uh, that moving forward. So great work from T Tiffany, Matt Feld, there in HR. Good. Good. Investments for the month. Uh, par value at the end of April was $524 million. The wham of the pools is one day, yielding right at uh, 1%. Wham of our other investments, this is investments less than one year, is 168 days, yielding 1.28%. Uh, Wham of our longer term investments with TCG Investment Advisors is 531 days, we're yielding 1.13%. And the Wham of our combined portfolio was 69 days, and we're yielding 1.05%. And our benchmark, the 90 day T bill, is at 78 basis points. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to dismiss. Well moved. All right. Thank you.